We're live. Call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Republic will stand one nation under God, liberty, justice for all. Call for a motion for the minutes, acceptance of the minutes of the August 18, 2020 meeting. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. Public forum for this evening? Call to the podium Mr. Jeff Rubin to speak about cable channel 20. As a reminder, our public forum uh, is limited to three minutes, and there is to be no uh, discussion of any personnel-related issues or children, uh, identifiable children. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, cable Channel 20. Um, a lot to do with the school and the uh, uh, citizens of the school district. Um, I was surprised to find out uh, within the past uh, 10 days or so that uh, turned on Channel 20, which brought us the wonderfully done Ellenville High School graduation, uh, school board meetings, uh, announcements of inclement weather. Everybody here knows the importance of, of Channel 20. I don't have to go into detail. Tuned in Channel 20 and no Channel 20. Four question marks, the kind of Scooby-Doo response of like, you know, that, that's what the TV did when I, when I uh, selected Channel 20. Um, so I thought to call um, Spectrum, um, and I got a million different answers. I spoke to a number of, of people as to why that had disappeared. Um, but I did ask several people, and half of them said that they were still receiving the channel and half of them said that they were not. Um, that channel is very important to all of us, and, and uh, I'm concerned that a chunk, whatever that percentage is, I didn't poll the whole school district, so I don't know, but clearly there are people who are not receiving that channel anymore and, and without notification. Um, there was nothing, you know, normally if there's a change, drop of channel, it's on your bill, there's notification in the newspaper, none of that. Poof, it was gone. Um, so since this affects uh, folks in our school district, it, it, it affects the, here are the, the students and the staff of the school working to put out all the information that comes out of that channel. I think it's important that we know what happened here. I certainly have a personal stake in it because I've lost Channel 20. There are other channels, and I was told that, you know, you can also get that content on, on 1301. Um, when you go to 1301, you get the same Scooby-Doo four question marks from the TV. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, as a lifelong resident of Ellenville, I've had that channel forever. Since back in the day, some of you know, when Helen Weiner used to do those, those broadcasts. Um, and, and there seems to be a difference between legacy customers in Spectrum, Spectrum's mind. In other words, those who were around and had plans through Time Warner and Charter Communications, and those who, any change that happened where you became a full Spectrum customer, let's say you got HD service, um, whatever your change in your plan is, that, that somehow has something to do with triggering you losing the, the legacy channels. So um, my request of the board is to look into it by whatever means you have at your disposal to find out why school district constituents, viewers of all the information that's put out there and the hard work that's done to put it out there, um, why that is. It's a- Thank you, uh, Mr. Rubin. Superintendent, could you address that at all? Yeah, I really, this is this is the first I'm hearing about it. It's kind of shocking to me. 
we've got no notification of any change from Spectrum. Uh, what I, I what I will be doing is I will be contacting uh, the supervisor Hauk tomorrow. They have a cable co co uh, commission to try to get some more information on why this happened, how it happened, but we were not notified either. And it's really very upsetting that they would just make a unilateral change like that with no, especially knowing that, you know, we have an educational TV channel that we fought very hard for, really keeping that separate than public access. And for them just to do that without notifying us is very disconcerting, but we'll, we'll get on it on that this week. And um, Mr. Rubin, if you could leave your contact information. Um, Ms. Uh, Nafisa will take it. So, and we'll we'll make sure we get back to you with whatever we find. Thank you, Mr. Rubin, for bringing that to our attention. We'll move on to our presentations for this evening. Call to the podium, Mr. Gerald Berliner, to discuss the school logo. Gerald. Good evening, everyone. I hope to uh, find you all safe and well. Um, what you're about to see is the presentation that I gave uh, to the street, uh, three stakeholders back on February 28th of this year, 2020. Uh, it's titled A Strategy for Success, and it's the culmination of um, the identity exploratory that we had undertaken with the three stakeholders um, to create a, a single unifying identity and logo for both the school district, the town, and the village. Um, like I say, this was presented to a bunch of people at uh, Two Elton Court. I believe that there were some of you in this room that were also at that presentation. But it certainly based on the last time I was here, it became self-evident that um, some of you hadn't seen that presentation and there was uh, a certain reaction to what was being proposed. And it was difficult because, you know, quite honestly, it was all being taken out of context and there was no background for people to... Um, you know, make an assessment on. And after that meeting, I was asked uh, by uh, Ms. Wiles and Mayor Kaplan if I would come back down at the earliest opportunity as a courtesy to represent this uh, presentation to you. Now, for those of you that were there, maybe you can just look on this as a refresher course. Um, but I think without further ado, why don't we go in and play? Hello, my name is Gerald Berliner and welcome to this presentation of a strategy for change and success. Most importantly, successful brands are always created born from a well thought out strategy in terms of both rationale and execution, along with a well defined and reasoned core concept. Without this, they may become nothing more than a purely cosmetic exercise, analogous to simply trying to wallpaper over cracks in a wall. And as all of us who have ever tried that will know, those cracks very soon start to reappear. One of the most common paths to change many companies and organizations take is one of evolution. Over many years, a logo can begin to look dated and out of step with contemporary design tastes, or a new strategic direction a company or organization wishes to take and communicate. It can also be an opportunity to address any inherent reproduction problems a logo may have. A good example of this was Federal Express where its existing logo had become dated in its look and was not representative of their new strategy of moving perceptions away from being just a package delivery company to a fully integrated global logistics company and created a significantly different visual expression with a bold contemporary logo type and a subtle graphic hook created by using the negative white space between the E and the X to form an arrow to represent forward movement. Once the core logo had been created, they then used it to create a consistent and unifying brand architecture, combined with colour, to then be able to delineate between their different lines of business. Colour can also be a very important component for creating both awareness and associations with a brand. From the red and golden arches of McDonald's, to Big Blue, and the unmistakable yellow of New York City taxi cabs, companies spend a lot of time, and in some cases a lot of money, establishing and then consistently using their colors across all of their media communications. The journey of change usually begins with a critical phase known as a visual audit. This is the gathering together of all communications material that exists within an organization to understand the current brandscape and allows for the assessment of how well an organization is using its brand and communicating it. 
It can show how consistently their logo is being used or not being used, how effectively their communications are being designed, both strategically and executionally, the tone of voice of their messaging, how they are using color, typography and imagery, etc. From this analysis, solid strategic recommendations can be made for improvement and or change. Our journey with our three stakeholders also began with a visual audit by collecting as much of their existing communication materials as possible to review and assess. We'll begin with the school. The school currently uses in certain places a round or symbol consisting of a tree in three colors, black, Pantone reflex blue, and Pantone 012 yellow. The symbol uses an old drawing of a tree growing out of a book. A tree is a very common symbol used amongst schools and libraries, as over the centuries it has become recognized as a universal symbol for education, knowledge, learning and growth. All very fine attributes indeed, and ones we will want to keep. But because of its rendering it has many reproduction limitations, and is not at all legible when used at smaller sizes. When we looked at stationery it was evident it was not being used there, and the stationery items themselves look somewhat dated and inconsistent. The quarterly newsletter also has no branding and is printed in two colours, black and blue. This also applies to the special education piece we found, which is printed in-house in full colour. The yearly calendar is an attractive piece, both functionally while being informative as well, but again has no consistent branding. Outside, the symbol is being used on the stone monolith sign by the main student entrance, but other than that, it is not being used for any other identification purposes in and around the campus. However, things started to improve greatly when we reviewed online applications. The logo and colors are being used very consistently, and a consistent brand architecture and nomenclature system has been created to delineate between Ellenville Central and the high, middle and elementary schools. It is also being used consistently on Facebook, both on the page itself and in page posts, with the example shown bottom right always seeming to get the most likes. Brand colors are also being used quite consistently on certain apparel items too. The village has two logos being used, the historical symbol of the boy with the boot, which many people still have a strong emotional attachment to, and the Find Allenville Roundel, which was created in 2016 for the Find Allenville campaign. Neither of these two logos are currently being used on stationery. The boy with the boot is being used to identify the government building, whilst the sponsor's banners being used throughout the village are merely branded with our name. The boy with the boot is also being used in high visibility areas, such as our gateway signs when entering the village from the north, east, south and west. The Find Ellenville Roundel is being used on communication pieces developed as part of that campaign, but they have begun to look dated over the years in terms of their design. The Shawangunk Mountains map, although informative and useful, needs its content updating and also has no form of consistent branding. Many of these communications can be found on freestanding kiosks located at Burn Road Park and Lippman Park and also in the reception of Two Elton Court and our small visitor centre in the Town Hall building. The Village of Ellenville website is not branded and is in urgent need of a refresh as it's also not responsive when viewed on a mobile device. The Facebook page only uses imagery with no defined brand mark. The town has two logos it uses on limited applications the old seal of 1776 and a symbol incorporating the head of a Native American. The seal is being used on stationery and a cream paper stock is also being used for all stationery items. The Ellenville Warsing Chamber of Commerce member directory has no branding and is indefinitely in need of a design makeover. The town of Warsing uses the Native American logo on its website, which would benefit greatly from further development and redesign. In short, what we've got here is Failure to communicate. With only very small pockets of consistent branding seen, we are most certainly in need of a consistent and unifying brand identity. However, this could be viewed as a positive as we will be working with a practically blank canvas on which to draw and develop our identity. The obvious question though is, if so, what should our identity be? The challenge is, we need to create something based on an idea that will be capable of shifting current perceptions into a more favorable light and yet still be relevant to our three stakeholders and their own communication needs and audiences. It is also important to understand that identity creation has two very important components. As mentioned, it needs a strong relevant idea or concept, but equally important is the execution or realization of that concept and or idea. From the clean crisp lines of the Mercedes symbol, meticulously drawn to express their core competency of precision engineering, 
to the softer curved lines of the Firefox symbol that creates a more playful, friendly and approachable feel, to the more innovative, painterly rendering of Unilever's evolved logo, which gives it a very strong humanistic and organic quality. How we render our new logo will be very important in communicating the desired attributes we wish to express. Our recommendation is that we too take an evolutionary path by developing the school's current logo. As we saw earlier, it symbolizes many positive attributes such as education, knowledge, learning and growth. But the tree is also intrinsically linked to our very own collective beginnings as both a town and as a community, when the forests and trees were used to burn as fuel for the glasswork furnaces built by our first settlers, and they surround us still in our present and will do so in our future. Given that trees are by their very nature very complex structurally, we will need to explore simpler, more symbolic forms rather than literal ones, such as more graphical executions, maybe an execution that contains an additional concept as shown here, with hands forming the bough and branches to suggest our community and people, to more simplified, stylized interpretations that are both contemporary and elegant, or maybe a fruit-bearing tree representing prosperity and goodness. Putting our tree into context to create a sense of place could also be of great value in creating a unique and proprietary symbol, because we are unique and so is our area. However, regardless of whatever path of execution we take, we must always remember that logos have to work hard. They have to work effectively and be legible at both large and small sizes, be flexible enough to be successfully reproduced across a wide range of reproduction processes such as commercial printing, electronic media, embroidery, and apply to a diverse range of materials and surfaces and may need to be fabricated in 3D. Taking all this into account, we recommend pursuing a simpler, more symbolic approach, using elegant curved lines for the bow and branches to give it a humanistic quality and simple soft ovoid shapes to represent the leaves, thus resulting in a very contemporary yet benign approachable and friendly tree, which are many of the attributes we also want to communicate and express. This execution will also ensure it will be legible at both large and small sizes, and when seen at smaller sizes, the leaves begin to take on more of a petal-like form, and our tree becomes more flower-like, which is also meant to be representative of the beautiful mountain laurel, which is so abundant in and unique to our area. With our tree now complete, it needs to be put into context and given a home. Our home. Our tree's home consists of the gentle curving shapes of our beloved and unique verdant green Shorngunk Ridge, our big open blue and dramatic skies, and lastly the vital role water has played in our history when the DNH Canal contributed so greatly to the establishment and expansion of our town, parts of which are still in use today as hiking and walking trails, and the many spectacular and beautiful waterfalls, rivers, streams and lakes that surround us which also includes our beautiful Rondout Reservoir. Also, it's important to remember that our very own town name, Wawasing, is derived from the original settlers to the region. The Munsi Lenape Wawasink word meaning a place where the stream bends or meets. Our symbol will be an elegant, contemporary and unique expression of who we are, where we've come from and where we are going. It still remains relevant to the school as an evolution of their existing logo and tree, but it's also relevant to both the town and the village and expresses the welcoming warmth of our friendly and approachable community. It is timeless in its appeal, relevance and execution, and will also be practical and easy to use and reproduce on all our marketing communications. It works well in both large and small sizes, on background colors, and on photographic backgrounds and will be easy to reproduce in black and white for when only single color printing may be available. Now we have our symbol, which at the moment is happily single, it needs to get married and bond with a consistent lockup with the names of our three main stakeholders. It will also be used for our Discover Ellenville website and campaign. But hang on a moment, let's stop here for a few minutes and once again revisit how important colour can be in building awareness and associations. As we saw earlier, the school has already been pretty successful in using its brand colours to create an association with their brand, particularly as we saw online and with apparel. Basically, they're not really blue and green. 
However, remember earlier how FedEx used color and nomenclature to delineate between its lines of business while still maintaining a strong, consistent looking brand? Well, so can we. From a rationale standpoint, we can once again look to our ridge for the answer. When it appears blanketed in rich yellows and golds throughout the fall months, we can apply that color to the ridge for the school symbol. And from there, we can really branch out, ugh, sorry, and build a comprehensive, consistent brand architecture and nomenclature system. Moving forward, although not included in this immediate scope of services, other important parts of our community, our regional hospital and library and museum may wish to join this union. And if so, we would already have in place a well-designed identity system that they could adopt should they so wish. As we quickly move forward, we will create and add other important tools for our brand identity toolkit, namely color palettes of defined and approved colors to be used as part of our identity, which we have already done for the Discover Ellenville website, strategically crafted to reflect different colors of our four seasons. Approved typefaces that will be consistently used on all of our communications to bring a familiar feel to our design and messaging. Top quality imagery that will dramatically show the beauty of our area and offerings. With these essential building blocks in place, we can confidently move forward with our build out and start bringing it all to life with professionally designed and contemporary looking communications. With the creation of Microsoft templates, we can bring a consistent and professional look to our stationery and our most personal form of communication, our business cards. Apparel will also be of great value to us with quality items available for purchase or that can be used as prizes for any competitions we may run. And will always be available to purchase at our key events. Remember, we potentially have nearly 4,000 bipedal advertising hoardings walking around out there to help us get the message out. Instead of having to incur costs fabricating new gateway and building signs, we can look at retrofitting the existing ones or wait and apply our new identity to the new wayfinding sign program already under development with Ulster County. But hey, let's also not forget about people exiting our village with some thanks for visiting us, come again soon signs. The school can also project it from their monument sign screen. We can also adopt a common identity practice of taking an element from our symbol and use it as a decorative secondary branding element known as a super graphic. Our Department of Works vehicles are also potentially large mobile advertising hoardings and very visible in the town and surrounding area. So putting it on some of those would be a very good idea. Creation of professional looking PowerPoint templates that can be used for pitch presentations to any hotel chains or national store brands who may be interested in locating here. And let's not forget senior county or state officials we may be seeking for, further funding or DRIs. All our promotional and attraction videos will be consistently branded and have a consistent branded sign off end frame. With a dedicated commitment to making this work, we will continue on our rise. And once again, Ellenville will be both seen and heard. Only this time, for all the right reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berliner. Okay. Up to you. Do you have anything else you want to discuss? No? Anybody got, uh, sorry, has anybody got any questions? No? Uh, Iris? I um, am just interested in knowing if, if, there, if it's I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm interested in knowing if it's possible to um, refine the design to some extent, to make it more identifiable as the school, when the school uses it. Well, if we go down that path, we're, we're entering to the arena of design by committee. I'm sorry, I can't. I said if we, enter, if we start entering down that path, we're going to enter the arena of design by committee. And that, quite frankly, only ever 
ends one way and that's not very good. Well, I'm not suggesting that we change the design that you have mm. supplied with us, to mm -hmm. us. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm suggesting that we might add um, the ES, the ECSD, let all find the truth that they're seeking that, that piece so that it's identifiable particularly to the school. Well, things like that, yes. I mean, we could definitely take a look at that because, but I think to try, I see one of the big issues that we've encountered particularly with um, the school's logo, is legibility at small sizes. Because we, we, we what? I'm sorry. Legibility at small sizes, how right. it reproduces and is whether it's readable or not. Mm -hmm. Now, based on what we've got here, if we were to then try and incorporate those words, actually within the symbol itself, I think we'll be back into that same situation where it could be very problematic in terms of reproduction, oh, excuse me, reproduction at small sizes. What we could take a look at, though, is incorporating into the logo type that sits in the symbol. So those words could be under Ennerville Central School District, those three words, sorry, I couldn't remember what they were. We could make that, that would probably be the better place to put that kind of thing because it will give it a lot of a, a larger footprint, visual footprint. So it may have a much better chance of being more legible at smaller sizes. So that if we're saying that the things that you feel are missing are those key words. Yes, that's definitely something that we can take a look at. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for an interesting presentation, Mr. Berliner. If there's no other questions, the board will take, well, up, can, take can, this up. And if I, I am going to go, but can I just say if there are any further questions if, or concerns, comments, if you could forward them to Ms. Wiles, that would be terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will take this up at the, the next meeting. We'll move on this evening to our reports, information, and or and correspondence. I have nothing for this evening, although I'll um, go to board membership. Jody? Um, I want to thank Lisa and the administration for doing the question and answers um, that they did with the public through YouTube. I just have one question. Um, in the future, can we make them that they're not anonymous with the questions that we got during the second session? that were very inappropriate and used a lot of um, inappropriate language. I think we need to make people accountable if they want to ask a question who they, it's coming from. Yes, we um, actually changed that uh, for the third session. Uh, we had a few questions that had come in prior to the, you know, prior to the beginning of the second session or during the session. So uh, we did change it so that you had to leave your name and your email address, which out through, I would say, more than half the questions on the third day um, did include that. You know, it's unfortunate uh, that we wanted to create a forum where people that might have, um, you know, concerns about asking a question, not wanting to leave their name, but I agree wholeheartedly um, with you that um, the decor of that forum really went south, and from now on, we anything that we have will be a email and a name attached to it. Okay, thank you. And I just want to thank you and uh, your staff for, you know, you kept your composure and stayed uh, professional throughout. And, um, you know, while, uh, you know, things, as you say, Jody, things, uh, there's a fine line when you walk between disrespect and, uh, you know, trying to voice your opinion. And, and certainly those things were uh, and what you want what you underwent through that was uh, very unfortunate, but uh, a thank you for keeping your composure and answering those questions. I, I just want to say, we, we think it's just a few people that it could have made the comments, but um, we did receive a lot of positive support. And I think people know how hard the board and the school district and the teachers and everyone's working to make you know, this work. So uh, we're very committed to school and our children and providing the best education we can. So. Much appreciated for all your support. Thank you. Well, thank you again. Anybody else? Wayne? Yeah, just, just briefly, I actually want to thank um, every single person that works here. I mean, we're, we're going through unprecedented times right now, and we have a great teaching staff, and everyone's going to work really hard, you know, and um, I just want to thank them for their, for their commitment to the students and the community over the last few months, and um, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Anybody else? Iris? 
the policy committee still exists. <laughs> We just have to pick dates, and I know that um, Geneva has requested to be on the policy committee, and so the board president has promised me yes, that he will call the current members um, because we're limited in the number of people we can have on the committee. So, Is there uh, anybody willing to uh, step down from the seat? policy committee? Really? Are, are there people fighting to get on this committee? Because <laughs> I would gladly step back. And Geneva would like to get on. I have at it. Okay. Well, we, we have actually, we're, we're not allowed to have a quorum, so we have about four members yeah. of the school board, and currently it's Jody and myself and Lisa Ramirez and Willie Bruce, and Geneva expressed an interest in joining, so one of us would have to step away in order to um, have Geneva join. So maybe we need to think oh. about it a little, and then and then Phil, yeah, you can I'll call, call everyone and find out. I will out. call and see if we can uh, arrange that. Thank you. Thank you. And while we're on the subject so committee, we're going to ask. We're going to ask again, who wants to be on? No, 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 no. Who wants to step down? That's currently on it. Oh, I'm pretty sure I still don't want to be on it. Yeah, okay. we got you on the no side, John. <laughs> I got you on the no side. I'm going to go on a limb here and say you're a no. Jody, speaking of uh, committees, how are we with the mascots? So Lisa Mascot. and I will be presenting at the next meeting, which is September 22nd. I think we are on revision number, what did you say? I think it's 14. 14? So hopefully we've answered a lot of questions and then we can answer your questions and we'll be presenting then. Thank you. John, how about the Hall of Fame committee? Uh, Hall of Fame is set for October 17th. We've lined up the breakfast uh, spot again. Um, I've spoken to all of the uh, inductees and they can all make the uh, ceremony we're just trying to wait back for who the speakers will be on their behalf um and then i just have to get a hold of the uh engravings unlimited and see if we can get the plaques done again this year so we should be good to go um i, I guess we're doing this uh, outside of knowing what our sports schedule is yes uh and rather than wait for that and our fickle governor to pick a date uh we just decided to go ahead with the 17th and you know everything will be the same with the exception of uh of a game thank you i'd like to throw this out to the to the board i was approached by jerry mayor uh local uh cpa um and he was suggesting that the board take up a committee to recognize the arts uh music um in you know ela etc uh as far as um having a committee to, such as the Hall of Fame committee, um, having another committee to recognize uh, past, present students and uh, faculty in, in the area of the arts. Um, I believe we started a discussion about acknowledging the arts. Correct, Jody. Did yes, you? we met with all the arts teachers and um, theater, <laughs> music and arts, we met with them to actually do um, possibly a banquet or some recognition at the end of each year. Um, we did speak with them, and at the time, they were not, you know, they were saying it was just a busy time from at the end of the year that it wasn't a good time for them to do something. So do you, did you get the impression it was be something they might want to pursue, but not at a certain Maybe time? at a different time. At the end of the year, they said it was just very busy for them. So it was something that maybe we could revisit and do something in fall or throughout the winter months sometime when, the, you know, they're not so hectic with the end of the year. But is that sort of aligned with what yeah, you're thinking? Yeah, that aligns. And Mr. Mayor has volunteered if you uh, care to so take him up on that. We, maybe we could have take a, a look at that. OK, um, anybody else? If not, we'll move on to Superintendent. So just a few things this evening. Um, on a very positive note, we had our first Superintendent Conference Day today. Um, teachers and staff reported in. Uh, it was very different. Mm. Uh, the auditorium was less than half full. Uh, we did have some technological difficulties that we worked through with regard to the live, to the stream of um, the comments and some of the trainings. I would say by mid-morning there was some corrections made and things got clearer. Um, we're hoping that over the next few days um, we're really able to work out the 
you know, the obstacles we see, you know, we haven't had everyone in the building and now we do, and uh, we're testing our bandwidth, testing our equipment, and we're making modifications as we move forward. Um, we have three additional days of uh, superintendent conference days tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. Um, I think we put the agendas in your, um, in your packet, maybe attached to uh, Kelly White's report. Um, but there's a, a great, we didn't, maybe, I'm not sure, but we, we did. There's a great array of um, opportunity there for additional mandated training and also for um, opportunities to work in the buildings with the principals um, and, and the staff to move forward and prepare for Monday, which leads me to Monday, September 8th, will be the first day of the full remote instruction. Um, and excuse me, Tuesday, Monday is Labor Day. Um, so it'll be Tuesday through Friday will be the first day of uh, full remote instruction. Uh, the, each building will be utilizing uh, the additional staff that we have um, to put together materials and books and supplies that will be either delivered or picked up um, in various ways by uh, family members and students so that they have the supporting materials and um, books and so forth that they need to assist them in remote learning. So that's all underway. Um, and we are still planning right now um, for a hybrid start on October 5th. Um, more information to come. Our next meeting is September 22nd, and I hope to have an update. We are you know, in the process and continue to plan. Our revised plan is up on the website, which includes, I said, the last meeting also, our new appendix with regard to contact tracing and testing. We're working diligently with the Ulster County Health Department, um, and we have some very good lines of communication open right now uh, for anything that, that happens with that. On a less positive note, I do have to say this. I think I mentioned it earlier, but uh, there's been some um, communication from the Division of Budget of New York State. And our July payment was with, um, it was 20% of our aid from our July payment that was withheld. And uh, we were notified that we expect our aid payments to be decreased by 20%. So we're looking at what that means for us. We have no idea if that's a cut. It surely sounds like a cut. Um, the state does say that it's having cash flow problems and so forth, but um, you know we're gonna have to plan accordingly as we move forward here, and we'll have more information as we have it. But I, I don't, all I have right now is that they've advised us and other schools that um, you know they're expecting a 20% a decrease in our state aid payments. Uh, Vince had contacted state aid planning. We're trying to see which aids are being decreased by uh, 20%. It wasn't necessarily across the board, um, but we didn't get a lot of information that followed with it. So we hope by the next time we meet, we have some more information because we'll have to see what path we're gonna take moving forward. So it's a significant concern to us and, uh, and to other schools. I think we, we felt some of the pain ourselves here, you know, last spring um, and other schools didn't. Um, but I, I think we're all in a, in a much, you know, there's a deeper crevice now that's coming that it appears. So uh, it's a little frustrating. You know we're doing more with less. Uh, Vince is working on a report for you on the amount of costs that we've had to incur with regard to um, this pandemic and preparing for a hybrid opening and technology and so forth. And uh, we'll have a full report, an ongoing report, so everybody sees exactly what, what all of this is costing us. And of course, there's no additional funds or any additional relief, not even relief with regard to the uh, mandates that are coming. So as, as we get more information, we'll share it with you. Thank you. I just want to compliment uh, the, the agendas for the con superintendent conference days were, were outstanding. I mean, well organized and well thought out and certainly well put together. And, Lots of things for everybody to get caught up on. So excellent job, Joel. John? So Lisa, if uh, that was July, you said we didn't get 20% of what the was? The July payment. When's the August payment coming? 
I think it's a September payment that we get. September. Um, so, so if that's a 20% cut, then he, the governor might be hitting us with a 20% cut, but making it look like it's just month to month. If that continues, are we looking at more layoffs? If that continues and we see this is going to be a pattern that goes into, um, you know, the, the fall payments and then the spring payments and we get that kind of advice, we're going to have to do something. You know, we cut a million, if I remember correctly, it was about a million six. And 20% of our aid is $4 million. We get about $20 million in aid. So we'll be short about a million four. And... Um, that is not sustainable over a long period of time, especially when, you know, we're, we're really up against a lot of um, additional costs that are, are, you know, coming down. So there are, there are struggles ahead um, if things don't change. Um, and I think that most schools are looking for some clear direction on what aids are going to be withheld. You know, sometimes, and this has happened over my career here, um, for 23 years, where there is a they withhold aid, or there's an aid that's removed because of a state audit, and then you wait 10 to 12 years to get the aid back. And all of a sudden, in a year where the state um, has allocated money in the budget, you'll get, oh, here's a 2002 refund of your public access cost aid, and you get it 10 years later. And we get that every so often. But it's, there's no rhyme or reason to it. It comes, it's, it's kind of like a windfall, but it's a windfall after there's been some reduction in the past. So I think that if we had to ask for anything, I think we need some consistency and we need to be able to plan and we need to be able to know what's coming our way and what the expectation is. Is this going to be a year with all? And I understand the economy is in shambles. I understand there's no cash flow. But, you know, in our district and out many other districts, and I said this today, we're doing much, much more with less. And, you know, it's not sustainable for a long period of time. So we're hoping that we get some clear direction on what all of this means and not just, you know, we hope we get it. We hope we get it to you. I know that the state is waiting um, with bated breath for the federal government to step in and to do a stimulus package for schools across the country and especially for our state. I don't know what the realistic piece of that is right now, but I'm, we're hoping for that also. So I think that's part of the wait and see game. But, you know, we're moving forward as we should. There are, you know, our kids go through once and we're all very committed. I appreciate you know, Mr. Story's comments. He, our staff is working really, really hard, and they have been. And we're trying to prepare, you know, and prepare well for our kids to return, whether it be remote, whether it be hybrid. So we just need some clear direction on what's going to happen with the state. So we're not, you know, waiting and waiting and hearing we're going to cut this and we're going to, you know, we're going to withhold this. You know, sooner or later, you know, the, the April 1st date passed for the look back, the June 30th date passed for the look back. These look backs pass. We don't have any direction. Now we hear withholding. You know, we need some clear direction on what's going to happen. If that's going to be, we're going to be cut. Just tell us. We need to plan and we need to all plan and move forward together to figure out where we are. None of this guessing. Phil, I don't, I don't know anybody that has a lot of confidence in him leading and coming in with clear direction. I, I think he's trying to take public education out. Lisa, we talked about and for whatever good it'll do, a resolution by the board, a lawsuit to try and recoup monies that we were supposed to get. Uh, we talked about working on that. Can we? Can we do something? Can we? So let me just. I, I'm and part of what we talked about, and I'll share it with you and the public here, is that you know that there are big school districts that have not received the millions of dollars that's owed to us over a period of time. It came, you know because the foundation aid formula was never implemented. And I think it was Poughkeepsie and Middletown and Newburgh, the big schools that mirror our demographics and high needs, more the need. Um, they, did, they did put a lawsuit forward and they spent a lot of money doing it and to no avail. And you know, it's very frustrating and there, 
we have it bad. There are other schools that have it worse. There are other schools that have it better. But I feel like I'm not sure that the money spent on a lawsuit right now after the history of the lawsuits that Newburgh and Middletown did as a consortium would go anywhere. I think a strong letter to you know, all of our leaders, especially at the national level also about you know, what this means for us. And you know, there is a feeling out there that this is an undermining of public education. And that's a big problem. You know, we all have issues, but we do it well. And we're here for all of our children, not for the select few in a private school and so forth. And I, and I have to tell you, I'm passionate about it. And I have no problem looking at a letter that, that we might be willing to you know, move forward on behalf of the board, so. How about we send them a bill for the unfunded mandates we've had to spend related to COVID and ask that he pay us back for that and put it out to the press, let it get some publicity. I mean, nice it's not doing anything to fight against the governor. Uh, the national unions are not doing anything. I don't know what the school boards association is doing or what the superintendents are doing, but we need to just put this out there. This guy gets a pass on this stuff and he's killing our product here. He's hurting our kids. I think we're all trying to tread water right now and, and keep our head above water. Put me um, and Vince on it. We'll write a letter. <laughs> so, you know, one of the things, John, that you bring that up, um, one of the greatest pieces that, of things that we can do and the public can do is that this is a, this is a national election year for the, the president and a lot of seats are at stake and the local seats as well. And we have senators locally like uh, Metzger, who's a big proponent of education. Uh, you know, she's running again. And, and maybe we need to get the our constituents and people out there to start just hammering the phone lines of uh, and people that will listen because we can, we possess the most valuable tool that we have and that is we can vote and we can change things if we want. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe we need to get out there and, and just get the word out and start saying it because uh, John, you're absolutely right. Uh, education is suffering and um, you know 90 days we're going to be undertaking uh, the budget process again here in Ellenville and we don't have any clear direction on not even where we are but where we're going so you know that's the that's the tools and the power that everybody has I just have one more thing I'm sorry I got a quick text asking me to please remind parents and students over the next few days to check your email. You're getting invites to your Google Classrooms. So please, I'm going to say it, we'll put it on Facebook, and we will get it out on our websites. We'll do some, ro some robocalling. But since people are listening and watching, um, check your parents and, and students, check your emails on a daily basis now. There's plenty of information that's coming your way. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent for Business, Mr. Napoli. Thank you. I don't know when it's going to air, but the superintendent and um, trustee Little, we attended a press release yesterday over at the Ellenville Regional Hospital for the Farm to School Planning Grant. Um, all the stakeholders of the planning grant and hopefully eventually the Farm to School Grant, we all had the opportunity to speak and it was actually, it was, it was a very wonderful event. Uh, well attended, Spectrum News was there. Uh, so, so hopefully we'll get a chance to see that press release um, go out over Spectrum News. Um, in my report, there is a uh, instructional technology concern um, document that's there. I don't know if it was maybe six or eight weeks ago, I forget, but I reported out that due to COVID and a lot of the factory shuts down, shutdowns in China, that there was a delay in getting processors for Chromebooks. And we thought that we were going to be getting the Chromebooks that we ordered in October. It looks like that might be closer to December. And what that means is all of our students have Chromebooks now, but to have them here at the school, when they report to school, they can keep a Chromebook at home and also have one here so they won't have to travel it back and forth. That might be at jeopardy only because we, we haven't gotten the Chromebooks. Hopefully they'll come sooner rather than later, but we don't know. And Mr. Aponte, our director of technology, he is reaching out to the vendor on a regular basis, nagging them, finding out when we're gonna get them, but they don't have an answer either. Um, I also wanna let you know that we've gone from uh, 
small bandwidth for our internet to very large bandwidth. So we've gone from 150 megabytes, we'll call it $15, up to 600 megabytes, we'll call it $600. So that when we are doing remote teaching and remote learning, the bandwidth to the internet should not be a problem with our performance and the students interacting with their teachers that are here at 28 Maple Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Kelly White. Good evening. Uh, just a couple updates regarding our professional development, what we just wrapped up for the summer. So uh, we're proud to announce that over the summer, teachers had an opportunity to participate in 46 different workshops uh, to help with the transition into the new school year. So included in our board report are the list of all the workshops, the number of participants, and the results of surveys that have been sent out so far uh, to respond to the uh, appropriateness of the, the content they received. Uh, we are gonna be doing an additional round of surveys for the most recent courses that the workshops that the teachers just participated in. So I anticipate getting uh, the survey out this week and results back in the coming days and I'll share them at the, the next board meeting, but I did receive a lot of uh, really great feedback from teachers that they enjoyed working with the content provider to equipment, that the instructors were very knowledgeable, that they were able to uh, understand what it's like for a teacher in the classroom to, to be learning these tools and had a, a just a great insight as, as previous educators in the classroom that you know, was, uh, trans that was transferable to our teachers. So a lot of great feedback. We're looking forward to uh, bringing them back in this year to continue working with our teachers. Additionally, uh, we uh, will be working with the curriculum committee this year to look at a new reading program for grades three through eight. So we did receive uh, information that our program that we were using was um, being phased out, so that's gonna be a main priority of the curriculum committee this year, and I'm hoping to get those meetings up and running as soon as teachers are, are settled into their, their new routines. So that'll be a primary focus as we um, move into this school year. Iris. I was just curious to know, you know, reading that the um, reading program was being phased out was a little unnerving to me. Um, and were we, notified ahead of time um that's one question and the i know that the the very young grades have the program super kids i think it is is that is that pro does that program extend into the upper grades and it, it just really concerns me that we're sort of going to be the year without a, a solid reading program so the Super Kids program was purchased for students in K through 2 it's a, mm. a lower primary program the Journeys program that's currently being used is for grades three through six. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I was told was that the, the Journeys program itself is being discontinued and it had an online portion and the online platform that supported that. Um, it's an older platform that they use. So where the teachers were drawing resources from is, is like an older platform that they're, they're not using and they're not looking to renew. That's what was told to me. Um, coming into this position, you know, I, I didn't have knowledge that that was happening. It was yeah. news to me as I came in, so I am working with them. I did have a great call today with another content provider that we work with, Newzella, and they actually shared with me that they have their uh, all their resources aligned to Journeys, and this isn't even information that I've had the opportunity to share yet with the, uh, the teachers, but uh, it looks like what they're offering through Newzella, which is another online um, ELA content provider, that they are gonna be able to have resources for teachers to pull that support the Journeys reading program as we explore what you know our new At least options through this are. year, right? So. Through this year, yeah. yeah so that I found that out late this afternoon. So the woman that I spoke with is putting together um, a brief overview of what the resources are and any PD that's attached to that to support the teachers, but it looks as though they have for um, three through three through six. Uh, resources that those ELA teachers can use to supplement and use with the Journeys reading program that they have. So that's some really good news that I was okay. able to un un unbury today. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks.
saying. I do want to say that we have done a lot of research. And we went back and searched all of our emails for information from HM, uh, Houghton Mifflin. And there was no communication to anybody yeah, in this district like about Big okay. Central <laughs> not being. And when, um, when Kelly spoke to them, they miraculous, miraculously said that they'd be able to open up the portal for another 120 days. So we're working to rectify this, but there was no notification made to us. I, I find it just very irresponsible. I mean, I would discourage us from even doing business with them as a result of such a thing to really undercut a whole elementary reading program just like that. Yeah. We, I, I think that I, it's startling that, to me, really. Yeah. It is. And, and Super Kids does not have, they don't, go beyond they don't spiral second. up beyond second grade. So we'll have to find something that commi the committee will have to really look at yeah. that and see what, you know, what, what they're interested in. I mean, in. and really, I thought to myself, with everything else happening, we have to deal with no reading program now. I, yeah. I just was amazed. I, I really was. I, no, I, we were. Some things just continue to startle me, yeah. no matter how crazy it gets. Yeah. Well, Thank I'm you. hoping. With what was you know presented to me this afternoon? Well, I'm hoping that's going to serve as just another way to supplement with what they're use, what they're currently working with. Excellent. So I'll get that Thank information you. out to them tomorrow. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Move on to uh, resolutions for this evening. Oh, excuse me, John. Yeah, I, I think that you know, Kellen, correct me if I'm wrong here. I I, I think the frequency with which we trade trade or change reading programs isn't as big a concern as it used to be because newer ones are always coming out and you know the the uh, statistics behind them and things like that uh i think it is important that we know when we're going to be contemplating those things but that was an aside point Kelly. i just wanted to give you kudos for the fine job you did on putting out the uh professional development the the array of courses was very impressive and i think another thing that's very important I bet our teachers really appreciate the fact that they had input into what kind of training they felt they needed as the experts delivering the instruction in the classroom. And I think that helped things go a lot more smoothly. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to personnel resolutions for this evening under 6.1. On the recommendation of superintendent of schools be resolved that Jose Morales be appointed as a community life mentor for the Brighter Future Initiative Program at a rate of $31 per hour work for the 2021 school year. Second. We'll be seconded discussion. Iris. I think we had a notice on um, that this, there was more added information from the original. Yes, um, they were the reference checks. Oh, okay. So is there anything in here that indicates that to me? So when I go to look at what the change is, I would know that that's what it is. Important. I mean, I read I read through it and then I got, well, there's a change. And then I was like, well, what, Let me look what am I it? supposed to look for? You know, okay. I don't even know what change. Let me see so. if we can do something to. Just a note of yeah. what change or something. Yes. So I'd appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carried unanimous. 6.2. Memorandum of Agreement. Upon the recommendation of Superintendent of Schools be resolved that the Memorandum of Agreement between the Ellenville Central School District and the ETSRPA Teachers Unit be approved as attached 2021-1. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one. Motion carries unanimous. 6.3. Co-curricular. Upon the recommendation of Superintendent of Schools be resolved that the co-curricular personnel is set forth on the list below, be approved at the contractual rate for the 2021 school year. Move the list. Second. The moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries. 6.4 Resignation. Upon the recommendation of Superintendent of Schools, be it resolved that the resignation of Betty Williams, cafeteria monitor, be accepted for the purposes of retirement effective August 21, 2020, with regret. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, no one. Motion carries. 6.5, upon a recommendation of Superintendent of Schools be resolved that the board hereby creates a .4 FTE teacher position in the physical education tenure area. Be it further resolved that the most senior teacher on the preferred eligible list in the physical education tenure area be offered the opportunity to be recalled to this position. So moved. Been moved. Second. Seconded. Discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Well, but, uh, discussion. Lisa, maybe you could explain. We made cuts early this year. Maybe you could just quickly explain why we had to bring this one back. 
Yes. So the schedule for the seventh and eighth grade classes in the middle school, I was informed that um, after really reviewing the schedule and trying to make some significant modifications to it, uh, there was no way around uh, two of our existing PE teachers not teaching a sixth class. So it has to do with the cohorting and the, um, the number of students in the class in the classes and just one second i just want to get whatever uh the cohorting with social distancing the offerings with regard to honors classes course uh, course and band and the students in seventh and eighth grade and then students needing uh student special education students needs in accordance with uh, a memo that I received from Mr. Spinelli. So there's two classes uh, that need to be for seventh and eighth PE so that we would alleviate the five class minimum for the two other teachers. So we did access 1.0 FTE PE. Um, and right now we can, we only, we need two classes back and that's 0.4 FTE. Any further, any further Spinelli. questions? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries. 6.6, .6, leave of absence. Upon a recommendation, superintendent of schools be resolved. Jolene Younger's request for a leave of absence be granted effective September 1, 2020 through September 30th, 2020. Removed. Second. Moved and seconded discussion. All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries. Budget, re budget resolutions. Move seven, one, seven, two, second. second. 7172 been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carried. Under education resolutions? Move 8.1. Say that? Move 8.1. Uh, 8.1 has been moved. Second. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries. Under other? 9.1 intermunicipal agreement? Move 9.1 and 9.2. 9192 has been moved. Seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? Motion carries unanimous. Mark your calendars. The next meeting is September 22nd, 2020. <coughs> we may call for a special meeting on September 8th, depending on the attendance of the who's available for the board. Anybody like to see anything on the next agenda for September 22nd? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Move to seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? No one? We're adjourned.